They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mills, Your Village Shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're outside today, we got the whole crew here. If you hear heavy breathing, it's just Moses. He's been chasing the alpacas. It's not nice. Now, let's talk about these unusual critters back here and how this came to be. I love them, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Mother's Day and I said, Nikki, what do you want for Mother's Day? Because you're kind of hard to buy for right. me. And she said, I want a llama. All right, which seems to be right. a reasonable request. How do you, where do you find a llama though? Well, that's exactly right. So long story short, you know how things work out sometimes. It's meant to be. It's meant to be. So we go visit uh, River Hill Ranch. Now I've eating their alpaca burgers, which are absolutely delicious. Yeah. Then we found out about their fiber and everything like that. Well, next thing you know, we're taking pictures of these two cats, which she was kind of wanting to get rid of, those two. You sent them to me. I had to have them. There's your llama. I know, I got two babies. Same family. But you know what? These actually make good guard animals. So when we expand and start moving that way and start getting more sheep, uh, these cats, I'm gonna see how they work out like that. They also won't eat chickens. Good. Like <clears throat> Moses. Mm -hmm. Not a good boy. Well, our chicken coop is working out really well, but one day I accidentally let four chickens out. And I hadn't had the talk with him yet, and I hadn't had right. the chance to introduce the chickens to him and make that formal introduction like these are your friends. Yeah. You guard these two. He was a bad boy, wasn't right. he? I'm not sh too sure you weren't involved in that whole mm, Look at those crime. sweet faces. They would never. Yeah, all I they found was never. like two chicken wings. <laughs> Anyhow, we're down to, what are we, 11, 11 yeah, chickens that's now? Plenty. That's plenty. That's plenty anyway. But the ranch has expanded. We had them brought in, carried in. They're not mm -hmm. that heavy. <laughs> they have two very different personalities. He got one out and it screamed like a person. It's yeah. like, wow, that was interesting. Packed it over here and it was all kicking and jumping. The other was just like, all right, I'll go wherever you want me That's to. That's mine, Milton. Is that Milton? Milton, and then yours is Myron, right? Myron. Myron's the, the protector. What interesting animals, but anyhow, now, we've been dodging rain showers all day. I've got wet, I don't know how many times. I've had changed shirts like the third time. But we are going to the harvest cabin because a friend of mine caught some striper. Okay. There are so many ways to fix striper, as you know. Right. Now, we've done the pan sear with a red wine vinegar sauce. So on mm -hmm. and so remember that I like with the that rosemary? a lot. That's good. But there's another way that you can really take this striper, which a lot of people, oh, I don't want to eat this striper. Anybody out there that doesn't like their striper that they catch, just fillet it. You can even leave the red meat in. I'll cut that out later. Send it to me, and we'll be we'll fine. We'll, we'll, we'll take it. care of it. We'll, it. well, we're going to put it on a plate. <laughs> we're going to plate it up and make you a fancy, smancy Ooh, looking piece of striper yum. that you can fool people and not know it's striper. Now, think about striper. It's white, flaky, firm fish, and it's delicious. If you fix I'm, it right. I'm excited. You got to get the there. All right, it looks like we're getting a few drops of rain. Let's take one more gander at our critters. Everybody's fat and happy. Moses is shedding. The sheep are almost done shedding. Babies are playing. 
chickens are getting fat. We got a little farm going. Yes, we do. Isn't I like that it. Fun? We got a petting zoo. <laughs> no. Well, we'll see about the alpaca. I kind of doubt you're going to pet them. All right, we better head to the cab. I'm hungry. Back at the cabin. Yay. Uh, if you hear a noise, listen. That's our little Eskimo fan. Even our fans old up here. Isn't that cool? I love it. You know what? That's the sound I remember as a kid. If you'd sit there and make noises, you know, blowing it and make noises, or that's that's the sound that put me to sleep. You still love it, don't you? I love, you love that I sound. Gotta, don't fall it. asleep up here. All right. Now, recently, some buddies of mine went out and caught some striper. Darren and Benji went out and caught some. Now, that's a big old hunk of some hunk, nice of, hunk of fish. Now, you cleaned it for us. The I thing like is, that. yeah, the thing is about this, there is some red meat that you see right there. You want to trim that off because it does have a bit of strong taste to it. Now. Here's what we're going to do with this. Now, there's so many things you can do with striper. You can blacken it. You can fry it. You can make, you can boil it in a crab boil. And, and oh, yeah. Because it's a firm, if you cut it right, you can cut it. It's, it tastes like shrimp. Yeah. And you can dip that in cocktail sauce. It's mm. absolutely wonderful. And then we have a new cutting board. We got this down in Berea, handcrafted by Edward E. Shoup. That's cool. That is nice. Beautiful. It's beautiful. That's all handmade Kentucky wood stuff right there. All right, now, we're gonna take this piece of striper. Now, a lot of people say, oh, striper's strong, I don't wanna eat it. Like I said, <laughs> send it, we'll take it. What I'm gonna do is carve a piece out of this like you get in a restaurant. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is, is I guess you could call this a butter lemon uh, kind of a wine sauce, mm. some heavy cream. You can put some capers in there if you want. It's gonna give it a bitey, almost olivey taste. Like if you don't like that, I like it. I do too. Now, we're gonna cut this piece right here into a now this is going to shrink up a little bit when we cook it. All right. Is that not the perfect size? Nice. Let's do one more. Let's For me? Let's carve this just, just a little bit of this red meat off. Like I said, that's just a little bit strong. You don't want that in there. We're going to cut another nice portion out. Look at that. That looks is good. Is that not the perfect piece of meat? Now, on the rest of this, we'll trim this up, cut it in little pieces, and deep fry it in peanut oil because it's good for you. Yeah. Now, look at those wonderful pieces of fish. All right, so we're gonna make this white wine, lemon butter caper. Yummy. If you choose to do the capers, uh, we're gonna take us some flour here, and we're gonna just put a little salt and pepper in it. Doctor's orders, whatever he may say, mm -hmm. he may say not to do that. Now we're gonna take this, and we're just gonna lightly dredge that. Not too much, just not too much at all. Didn't put anything on the surface of the fish. Just let the moisture there in take you, effect. You feed me good. And then we're going to lay this in our olive oil. If you go to a nice restaurant and you ask for their sea bass right. or whatever it is they have, their grouper, and you get that lemon butter, white wine sauce. That's about the size it's, you it's get. heavenly. Yeah. That's about the portion that you would get. And, you know, we're going to make enough sauce here for, you know, if you get a couple fillets, you can feed six or eight people because yeah. striped bass are big fish. People assume that cooking is so tough and so hard. Watch what I'm doing here. You just really have to watch this. We're gonna cook this for three or four minutes on each side until it gets that nice golden brown, and you know it's gonna be flaky on the inside, and you know it's gonna be done. Then we're gonna set that aside. Okay. All right, Nikki, while I'm doing this, if you will, go ahead and squeeze me about half a cup of lemon juice. Okay. While I'm browning this up. And we've got that figured, what, about two lemons, the juice from two lemons? Yeah, I'll get you about half a cup. We'll measure it. All right, fish is nicely brown. Yeah. We're gonna take that off. We're gonna set that right there. This piece right here, nice Yum. and brown. All right. All right. Now I've still got some olive oil in here, so I'm gonna take these shallots. I'm just gonna lightly turn those over. Press those uh, pieces of garlic in there. I'll press them. Here we go. It takes a grip sometimes. Okay. You go ahead and put those in there, and I'll press this garlic. I like this because it's kind of tough for me to cut it up. You get all that garlic out of it. You don't want to brown it too much because it gets bitter pretty quick. Okay, Pop that other in there real quick. Oh, you smell that? Yeah, it smells good. Pop that in there. Now, just really, really quickly, I'm going to turn those over. That's good. And then yeah. I'm going to come back directly with my white wine. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Scrape all that good, good stuff off, off the bottom. See where we're going here? I do. 
Now we're going to put the, the remainder of that in here. Okay, and we're going to turn the heat up just a hair. We're going to come back with our lemon juice. Fresh squeezed. Fresh squeezed. I'm going to put just a shot of Worcestershire or Worcester sauce, a tad of hot sauce, salt and pepper to taste. Now smell that. It's, that smells isn't delicious. Isn't that nice just by itself? I'm going to cook that. I'm going to let that thicken up for about three minutes until it starts to get a little bit. Wow, that smells good. Lovely. All right, let's go ahead and put a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. It has absolutely no calories in it. Oh, good. And we're going to cook this for about a minute until it starts warming back up. That looks good. Now, we've got two sticks of butter here that are room temperature. You'll want that. That's our last added touch to this. We'll let this thicken up for about a minute. And then, little by little, we're going to put this butter in here. And it's not going to be delicious. Okay. Go ahead. Not fattening either? Pat by pat. And we have almost done. That was quick. Mm. All right, that's enough. We're, we're good. You're good? We're good on the butter. All right. Now, right before you're done, taste it. Make sure it's got everything you need in there. Do a little oh, adjustment towards the end. Shouldn't I probably taste that? You probably should. Now, you get that zing, mm. that lemon. Oh, that's good. All right, I'm going to back that down. Now, would you bring me a plate? I sure will. And I'll show you how this is going to look. We're going to come back with that. Yummy. That doesn't look good. No. I would not eat that. I'll eat it then. You don't have to eat it. Maybe I would eat it. Now, that look, looks good. Does that look like something you get out? Is that something from a fancy restaurant? I'm telling you what, look now. At you. This is not that hard. You always outdo yourself. You're creative. A little bit of tomatoes. Just a, just a tiny bit of tomato on top. Doesn't that look terrible? That looks nice. Striper. Right out of Lake Como. Delish. We're ready? Ready. Mmm. Good. I'm just telling you. Mmm. Mm. Oh, did you sell again? Very good. No. Ooh, the really? flavors. Excellent. Just zing across your tongue. With that lemon and the mm. shallots. You gotta mm. have it in the mm. wine. We've been working on the smokehouse. I saw that. John Akers has been has been moving along. He, get, he went from the first step where he dug a little hole, right. set some blocks, came up a layer, put a little flue in there. The next thing he's going to start to work on is the actual place where you build the fire. Now there's also a little door on here so we can draw air through there, crack it open okay. a bit. Now this is a cold right. smoking outfit. But let's go to the next step with our buddy John. You showed up for work today. Look, I've got my like non-working shirt on. You got your working outfit on, as usual. Only well, got one. Now let's talk about what you're going to do today. We're going to go ahead just so it can be setting up and set these anchor bolts in our foundation block here. I mean, it gives us a solid core all the way around. It stabilizes it. If there's any separation, any cracking, because this side right here is absorbing the heat, it's all solid filled too. So it's just that much better a bond for your heat to process through. I put the last block on our flue to lock it in place, and then I'm going to fill that all solid all around that flue so we don't have any fire seeping out that, just like you would if you had a fireplace or a chimney anywhere else. Same process. We poured the pad. We set the fire brick in place just like we did these half stacks over here. So they're embedded in the base. We started with one framework around the outside of the outside brick. After it was up and sound, then we set the door in place. The door in place, and after we set the door in place in the fire brick, then we brought the face brick up to seal that in. Then we had structure to lay our fire brick against. The angle gives you, just like a stove or a fireplace, you get, you get an angle so that your ashes fall into one spot. Uh, it just allows you to not have a crevice or a corner, per se, that things are going to get settled in and hide in. You can't clean it out as well. And we embedded it in there the same way. We cased it all the way around the sides, up to the front, all the way to the set. So your door is set in concrete. But look, look what we've got. We're getting there. Man, yep. oh man, that's getting close. Yep. All right, your grandmother worked in a restaurant. Yes. She would have to peel lots of oranges. She had a trick. What's the quickest way in the world to peel an orange and not get all messy? This is it.
I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. Well, we was born and raised back in the sticks. Everybody used to call us six. Had a 20 acre holler that was nestled between two hills. Raised hogs, and chickens, and cows, and a mule might have been hillbillies, but there weren't no food we had plenty to eat. Raised it all ourselves. Now the biggest problem that we ever had was a mule named Rodney kept everybody mad. No matter how hard we tried, we couldn't keep him fenced in. He'd get in the garden in Ma's flyer bed and paw at the cuffs and crack his old gray head, settle his nerves with a drink and patch the fence again. Me and my brother bought an electric fence battery and all, put it up one night, gonna surprise our paw. Had to keep the mule in so Paul wouldn't get so tense. Paul got up that night, moving kind of quick, headed for the outhouse, the fog was thick. Must have lost his way, got hung in that electric fence. Yeah, he must have went through his spiritual change, he don't look the same anymore. Works hard every day, goes to church every Sunday, no more loafing at the country store. Treats us all different, he can quit chewing the backer, ain't cussed or drank ever since. The night that Paul got hung in that electric fence, we heard Paul scream, he said, come quick, son. Martians have got me, they're zapped me with a gun. Wasn't hard to find, the sparks were flying everywhere. He said, stand back, boys, I ain't a joking. His body was jerking and his long john was smoking. Hair was standing straight up, he must have really been scared. We was trying to tell Paul what we had done. Saw Ma coming with her old shotgun. She said, step aside, boys, ain't no Martian gonna get my man. When the mule ran out of the barn with a bucket on his head, Ma let go both barrels, filled him with lead. Thought he was a Martian, couldn't make her understand. Yeah, he must have went through a spiritual change, he don't look the same anymore. So works hard every day, goes to church every Sunday, no more loafing at the country store. Treat us all different, even quit you on the backer, ain't cussed a drink ever since. The night that Paul got hung in that electric fence. We got Paul out when the battery went dead. He was stiff as a board when we got him in bed. Me and my brother got scared, snuck the fence back to the store. They still swore up and down that the Martians was there. He been able to do nothing with Paul's hair. Can't figure out why the mule won't need to have a bucket anymore. So how'd you like your Mother's Day gift? You know what, that is so sweet, I'm so happy. I love them, and I'm gonna make it so that they love me. I'm gonna train them so that they'll come to me. I have to be able to pet those. You know what, she, though, she explained that those are not like cuddly creatures, they're more like a cat. Can I try, though, to well, make it sure so I can, can pet try. it? I'll, okay. I'll have fun watching, but okay. I don't think they're cuddly animals. That was the best present ever, and you got me too. Anyhow, let's talk about some fun facts. Now this is just straight off of Wikipedia, but listen to this for those of you who don't, don't know. An alpaca is a domesticated species of South American camelid. They've been domesticated for years. There are no known wild alpacas. How about hmm. that? I didn't know that. They were bred for fiber and meat. Yeah. They've been eating hmm. them for years. So if you see us and think, why does he want to eat that cute little creature? That's what they were bred for. They use a communal dung pile. They go potty in I one know. place, which that. means I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put some straw in there and say, go to town, guys. You're going to play in it, not me. Oh, it's the thing about the tomatoes. Okay. There are some alpacas that their fiber is not what it needs to be, so they take these and they use it for meat. And again, we're not the first people that have been eating these for thousands and thousands of years. Right. Oh, you can't eat one of those? Well, we eat plenty of cows, we eat yeah. plenty of chickens, and in that part of the world, that's their red meat source. Now, I want to try this meat, and I want to try it in a pure form. I don't want to season it. And I talked to the folks over there at River Hill, and that's the way they fix theirs. Really? On a salt rock. Okay. They take it. Put it on the salt rocks, lay it down, don't season it, boom, and that's how they eat it. Look at that good looking loin. We're just gonna take some slices, we're gonna lay them right on here. I don't wanna get them too done, okay. but I, I'm not gonna season them. I wanna get that pure flavor so we can, you know, we've had the hamburger, it's delicious. It is. But I wanna get that in its pure form to really see what that tastes like. Okay. Now I'm gonna start off with a little spinach and onion because I always like to do that because we've been yes, pretty I... much carnivores tonight. Yes, we have. I'm telling you what, just remember, 
if you're new to this, as the rain comes down on the tin roof, I like that. If you're new to this, plenty of oil, plenty of oil. Because if you don't use much oil, it's really gonna soak that salt up. Right. But just get it up to 400 degrees, bare minimum. This stuff's gonna wilt pretty quick. Plenty of oil, plenty of oil, plenty of oil. Hey Nikki, I'm gonna get this going right here so we can seem like more of an omnivore. I don't wanna be a total carnivore. Okay. Go ahead and open that package up everywhere and we're gonna cut off some nice slices. All right, now that is just a pure piece of meat. Just boom, just like that. Our meat eating, we eat everything rare. I like to taste it, I like to know what it actually tastes like. Now, the first thing I do when I eat meat. How's it smell? Pretty good. It has almost no smell. So what does that mean? It means it's not strong, it's not gamey. It's gonna taste good. Now, we don't need any seasoning on here. I'm talking zero seasoning. Don't forget to put you some oil on there. Look at that. Oh, Yum. I'm excited. I'm now, excited try it. here's the deal. No seasoning. We don't have to put any seasoning because you're getting the flavor you need right, right. on this. And again, we don't even start cooking until we get 400 and some degrees. We're up to almost 500 now. I want my little thing. I do too. This is the part of the show. When I was, when I had this whole concept, part of the song that I wrote was try some grub you've never tried before. It's a great big world and there's so many wonderful tastes out there. Try it. Smell. Really Life good. is short. You know what? I can't hardly stand it. We'll, get, we'll get these two pieces done. <laughs> I'm going to absolutely have to try some of that meat. Now, it's rare. See there? Yeah, it's good that's good to me. That's the way we like it. You may not prefer it like that. All right, let's let that one sit there. You ready? Which one do you ready. want? This one here looks awful good. I want this one right here. Something about it looks really good. Oh, my goodness. That is good. That's delicious. That's like super tenderloin. Mm. That's what this is. It's That's tenderloin. wonderful. Now don't be eating my babies out of the field, but they taste pretty good. <laughs> Depends on how mean they are. Hmm? Think that there might be some comparison to maybe sheep or something Nothing. like that, but that is its own. You, yeah. you know, sheep has its own flavor. Not wild at all, is it? Mild, sweet. And tender. This is probably a good time to tell folks about our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. Like it, see where we're going and what we're doing. Also, check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com to watch some shows you may have never seen before. So, I guess it's that time of the show. We're going to pretty much leave it up to the fact that it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats, and good eats. We'll see you next week with a brand new show. We still have got to get our garden together. Mm hmm. We do. That's some wacky weather. I was going to plow the ground up today. This week. Late garden tips. We have a friend that's coming on who actually does her own heirloom seeds. I like her. Mm-hmm. Coming up next week. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Ken Cove Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, Your Village Shop. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by The City of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hey, Neil. How are you? How was the trip? With nearly 7 million investors. He's right here. Hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Holly's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. 
It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.